Peace and blessings and welcome back to the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. This episode is brought to you by HeritageHipHop.com. Make sure you subscribe to HeritageHipHop.com, become a member and get free music, great interviews and great content that builds up and supports the hip hop culture. We are sponsored by Transparent Credit Repair, the superheroes of the financial literacy and credit repair world. Changing your credit score and updating your credit report is a decision that can change your life. By going to HeritageHipHop.com and clicking on the link for Transparent Credit Repair, not only are you changing your life, you're also getting 20% off of all services given by Transparent Credit Repair. So, once again, go to HeritageHipHop.com, click on Transparent Credit Repair and change your life by filling out the application to fix your credit report and raise your credit score. On this episode of the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast, we're going overseas. That's right, we're going to the land of the rising sun. A son, a native son of Kobe, Japan, who's also a resident of New York City. And we're talking to Omen44. Omen44. Either way you want to say it, dope MC, who calls himself the calls himself the original Asiatic man. I mean, he's from Asia and he loves the 5% nation and what hip hop has given to him. So let's listen to this podcast interview and support my man. Not only does he have a single out with Sky Zoo, he also goes overseas and does stuff with French rappers, um, not only American acts, but he he's really big. A shout out to DJ Crush and everybody in Japan that helped make hip hop grow and brought us this great interview courtesy of MJ and Hip Hop Connects. So without further ado, check out this great interview and more so I'll be back with the rest of my commentary when it's done. Stay tuned. Peace and blessings, and welcome back to the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. This episode, we're going overseas to a land I've been wanting to visit for so long because this land has given birth to the person that we're talking to right now. Please introduce yourself to the people. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, peace. This is for, um, Omen, I'm a Japanese rapper. Yes, sir. Omen 44, Japanese artist, rapper, and trendsetter, am I correct? Thank you. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Well, we're gonna we're gonna start this off by me saying thank you for coming to Heritage Hip Hop. And okay. um, Asian culture is uh-huh. so appreciated in the African American slash Black culture that mm-hmm. I mean it, 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 it it's it's kind of hard to know where to begin. So I ask mm-hmm. you this: Asian culture is very big on honor and holding up a name. How do you honor your name in the hip-hop culture that you establish yourself in? The thing is, you don't see that much Asian rappers actually, you know, uh, spitting in English and all that. But the truth is, there was quite a lot of us. Um, We started off from Mountain Brothers. There was um, a dude in the name... uh, There was... Guy in the name of a uh, Shingo Chu, Peace to Gaza. Um, we have we have so many out there right now. Um, even China Mag, uh, Dumbfounded, and we came quite a long way, you know, uh, establishing everything. And Japan was quite um, in the hip hop thing from the early days, for, even from the eighties. They they used to have a band called name uh, named um, Tiny Punks, and uh, they were doing it. They were they acknowledged what hip hop was and they were doing it back in the eighties even. And um shout out to uh, DJ Muro. Um he was rapping back in the nineties with um uh DJ Crush with the he organized this group called the uh, Crush Post Um uh, and like yes, we uh Japanese folks were in the hip hop scene since the nineties, you know. In the eighties I mean actually. And uh, yeah. it's been it's been a quite quite a long way, and you know, for me, honoring my name is just honoring these names that just uh, that I just spitted. You know, um, you know, I I always when I when I say you know, you know, I self Lord Asiatic Master or the you know the original Asiatic Man. You know, it does mean the five percenters and all that, but you know, it gives so many. Uh, feelings to my, you know, Asian background, too. Definitely. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, because I was doing some studying to prepare for you, because one thing, I don't like to go off of people's singles and just talk about that. I want to get a, a feel of the culture and the person I'm talking to. And when I did some okay. research, right, Yo Yoji uh-huh. Park and DJ Crush came up a lot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because Because – we're talking about how the culture went over there and people took it yes, and yes. wanted to graft it into their own identity. Yes. Oh, you know, uh, wait, I, I have a good story. Um, okay, the first Japanese hip-hop I heard, right, mm-hmm. was in the 90s. And it was actually from a De La Soul album, um, Balloon State of Mind or something. Okay, they were featuring it. They were featuring a Japanese rapper on it in the name of Sadarapa. That's how I came in to acknowledge there were Japanese hit rappers even. So yeah, it wasn't yeah. actually yeah, digging the Japanese folks at the beginning, but it was just listening to, you know, hip hop and then I found there was a Japanese rapper doing it, you know, like, oh damn, Japan was already catching up like this, you know. So it was amazing to me, you know. And that, that, that's the moment, you know, I, Yes, I, I still remember, like, you know, Japan's not big big in um, uh, cable TV and all that. And back in the days, we only had uh, um, this TV program called Sony Music TV that was play, aired on every, like, Friday, it was Friday or either Saturday night in the middle of the night. Like, it was, like, 11 or 12 o'clock. And, you know, I remember watching MC Hammer on there. Uh, Top Call Quest, um, KRS One. I still remember those two videos that I first saw. It was KRS One with Love's Gonna Get You and uh, Top Call Quest with Can I Kick It? You know, so that's my roots, you know. That's how I got to, you know, and with this Chadarapa acknowledging that there was Japanese rappers, you know, I got in from there, you know. Definitely. That's dope. Shadarapa. Yeah. That's Kanya, that's Kanya Wabujibaku, right? Buji, yes sir. What was that? Kanya Wabuji Baku. Boogie back Kanye. tonight. Yes, that's right. right. That's exactly right. That's boogie back. Konya, yes sir. Konya boogie back. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yes, so, yes, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I did some research because, like I said, I've always wanted to go to Japan. That's a dream of mine. Yes, yes. And, and yes, one yes, thing yes, I, I love about Japanese culture, when it comes yes, to hip hop culture, is dance and rhythm. How yes, do you? How, how did how did you partake in hip hop? Did it first come to you with writing and lyrics? Did it from come, first come to you with the beat, or was it the atmosphere and the dancing that happened because of the music? You know, because when I was watching MC Hammer, thinking that was the thing back in the days. No, I, I shouldn't say that way, but you know, I mean, you know, um, like he he was doing these dances, and he was doing what was that dance even? I forgot with all that baggy Hammer time. pants and all that. Hammer time. Yes, Hammer time. Yes, definitely. <laughs> So, like, you know, then from there, and, like, you know, then you do research is little by little, right? And then I'm catching up all these names, Pete Rock, boom, 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 and, like, acknowledging the depth of it, you know, and, like, how this whole, you know, the minute, you know, till yesterday, I didn't have no clue the next there were so many options there that, you know, I was kind of, kind of confused, you know. <laughs> and like, yes, like, so, like, so it was, it was hard for us to even grasp what hip hop was really back in the days, you know. Cause it seemed like rap, it seemed like graph, graffiti, it seemed like dance, but at, at the end of the day, when I went through all of it, it was everything, I guess. You know, it came in with the wild style, the Star Wars, you know, so, and, you know, Japan was big with the dance. I, I, I'm sure they're big, big with dan- dancing and all that right now, even, you know, hip-hops and breaks and all that, you know. And yes, that, definitely, I came in with that dance moves, checked out, you know, because, so, like, even with checking out these dance moves, all we had was VHS videos, really, back in the days. And even yeah. just VHS videos, when something that was sold was like filmed in these underground clubs in Tokyo or something, because you know I was living in Kobe, so 
you know, Osaka, the west side of Japan. So we needed that information from Tokyo even, really. Mm. Just a blurred video, really. So we, we didn't have no clues back in days, really. That's deep because that's how we learned over here as youth. Like, it came from here, but mm -hmm. still, we yeah. had to find it to understand it and to enjoy it. Like, like I'm going to tell you about me. The first okay. rap song that really hit my heart was It Takes Two. I was a young boy, so when mm -hmm. DJ Whoa. Easy, was Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock came on, I just knew that was my song. I didn't know nothing about the culture. And then it didn't, then, then hip hop didn't click to me again until LL Cool J and then NWA. And then in between that time, there was people that I missed and people that, you know, I, I, I learned and I'm like, wow, where do I really begin? I just know what hits me and what doesn't. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Definitely. But, but even in that, you can't be hip hop until you try it. So I danced, I tried to draw, and believe me, I can't even draw a straight line. So I know graffiti wasn't for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so I danced, I drew, I tried to rhyme. And the thing that made hip hop stand out to me was the pain and the story that came from it. What mm -hmm. about hip hop story gravitates to you and made you want to do it? It, it was. It was all the backgrounds and everything, even with the words, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, I, I actually grew up in Texas and uh, went to, went back to Japan in my teen, but so I kind of knew what, you know, I kind of was able to speak English and all that, and I was able mm -hmm. to catch up with few words, but like when, when like Rakim came or like Nas came, I didn't actually know what these people were saying, <laughs> like, you know, mm -hmm. like, God, or, you know, like, know the ledge. What is this man trying to say? But at least he's trying to say something deep, though, like, you know. Mm -hmm. like, yes, like, like, even, even with simple words, like, you know, like, method man saying, you know, you be... You be my whiz, and I'll be, your, you know, like, you know, small things, but like, you know, it, it, it was the whole background and how deep, sophisticated it was, you know, created in a in a ghetto, you know, like in the in like the poorest area, in like the, you know, the hungry area, you know, like. Yeah. It was so sophisticated from the people, the most unexpected person, you know, mm -hmm. like hearing the, these kind of words, these things that, did, you know, that was built from there, you know? Yeah. And the that, whole that's... thing was like, I think it just fit in with the whole, the, the era even, like, like, with the idea of sampling, like taking these loops and just combining it and like making your own song, like, you know, like coming in for, from that, all you did, all you needed to know, know was to know a good music even. That way mm. you can just combine that. Like, so like, and like, you know, I, I couldn't totally understand these rhymes and everything back in the days when I was like in a team like but you you just actually felt it you know felt the struggle of it felt the you know like you know even with the Wu-Tang like they might be just saying you know bitches money and all that but they say it in a so sophisticated way you know so, so eloquent way you know like so mm -hmm. they, I, I guess that's the art of it, you know, and um, I just yeah. got in from there, you know, and uh, uh, shout out to my man Nips uh, from Buddha Brand. Um, there were a few Japanese folks that was doing in the early era that inspired me to, like, go in, like, really go in, like, even Shingo 2 and all that. These people were doing it in English. Like, Buddha Brand, they actually brought back the New York hip-hop. Japan and then the way they were combining these words with the English and Japanese was like strange strange too 
like very strange, but like, like, like so it felt so New York even. Mm. I, I, I don't I don't know how how to explain this, but you know they they were living in New York for a while, so I guess they, that's how they grasped it and like understood the whole culture, and they were in the. Yeah, because they were they were telling me that they were they were in the um, Bobito show too back in the days in the nineties or something. Hmm. You you didn't know there was a, a Japanese artist on the Bobito show, right? That's quite crazy, right? Bobito, no, nah, I never knew. But you know yeah. what's deep about what you're saying? You know what's deep? You said that it was a feeling, and mm -hmm. it, it, it it came through. That's the one thing about hip hop I need everybody to understand. This is Karev on the line of Heritage Hip Hop Podcast with Omen 44, a Japanese MC who's a world MC. So don't think he's just Japanese. He's ours too, you know? And, um, hip hop yes, is a spirit. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's right. Hip hop is a spirit. Hip hop is not music. I always say that to people, and sometimes people get it, and sometimes people don't. I want to get, I want to get your opinion on this as a person who's an international artist yet is a domestic talent as well. I believe hip hop is not a music. I believe hip hop is like God's connection to humanity. Yeah, and this is yeah. why I say that. I say that because yeah, exactly. the uh, first, the first beat that you hear is your mm -hmm. mom's heartbeat in the womb. Yes. Yeah, that, yeah. that drum is the heart. So you always oh. have that beat with you. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I always yeah, say, I always say you take journey, when you take your journey through life, you take steps. When you write notes on paper, the lines you write the notes on are called steps. When, yes, when, yes. when you make harmony, you're actually traveling and making things work together in sound to make yes, a body of work. And your body works through the working together of your lymphatic system, your respiratory system, your endocrine system. And those things yes, work yes. together in harmony. So all yes. the musical vibes and words of vocabulary we use to describe hip-hop are also vibes of vocabulary that we use to describe the human body. How do you feel about that description of hip-hop? Totally. I mean, that's that's what I came in with. Like, like even, what was that book that KRS-1 uh, wrote? Like The Gospel the of Hip-Hop? Yeah, the first word, the first I, I, first chapter was about that. You know, hip hop is not about this or that. It's about your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's about your life. You know, and like you, it's either you become hip hop. You know, like from the spirit. You know, and that's that's that was that was my Bible. That that was Bible to me. You know. So okay. like, you know, it that so yes, I I began digging, I began learning all these knowledges, I got all these uh, information from all these people. And yes, I but to totally understand it, truly understand it, you know, you, have, you need that spirit, you need that heart, you know. Yeah. You know, we all feel that. Like. Yeah. Yes, like like you know, that's totally true. I mean, so let me ask like, you this question. Like, then. Yeah. Let, me, let me let me ask you this then. You took the essence of hip hop into your own personal spirit. What did hip hop bring out of you that wasn't there before you did hip hop? That's a good question. Um, it brought me. Positivity. You know, since I moved into New York, it's been something like 20 years now. It's, it's something close to 20 years. Um, first, I, when I came here and moved in, I just came here for the love of hip hop, really, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at the same time, well, now I can maintain all this, doing this artist thing, doing blah, 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 you know. I even bring out artists in Japan and all that, you know. But, you know, now I'm deep in this culture, you know, it wasn't like that when I first came in, when I first knocked, in, knocked on the door, you know, I needed to eat, you know, I was just trying to survive here. But from through there, you know, I was acknowledging what New York was all, what this, you know, like, just people saying, you know, welcome to the belly of the beast, damn, this is the apple of the beast, damn, this is the rotten apple, you know. 
I was feeling those words that all these MCs were still saying back in the days, and like, just, just, you know, just sucking all that up, and like, that became me, you know. Mm. Like, even when I first came into Brooklyn, the reason I moved into Brooklyn was because I, there was this song from more years that that he was singing, I live in Brooklyn. I live in Brooklyn. And that was so fascinating. I, I'm, yeah, and, uh, even Moss Def was, like, um, sampling that song back in the days. And, like, just for that reason, I came to Brooklyn, you know. And the reason I got to know more years was from his jacket. The mm-hmm. Smith and Wesson had the same uh, album jacket with Roy Warriors. And, like, that's how I got to... So, like, back in the days, you needed to dig it and understand the culture and then get into it deeper because you're more, you're more curious, you know. Mm-hmm. Damn, oh, damn, this guy sampled this part. Whoa, oh, he got this from here? Whoa, I didn't know that. So, like, you know... Everything has a root to it. Everything has a source to it. Everything has a cause to it. You know, mm-hmm. so I was trying to dig into that as deep as possible and try to grasp that New York feeling, you know. But, you know, now, you know, I la- you know it took me quite a while, you know, because, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, me coming into the culture, you know, I was an Asian. I needed to... I needed to organize my own party. I needed to get connected. I I brought out so many artists to Japan. I I done so many things, you know, just to mm-hmm. get connected, just to get hooked, you know. And I mean, it's paying off little by little, but like, you know, it's it's the uh, yeah. I guess it's the lifestyle, you know. At the end of the day, it's you know the what? life you live. It's the it's. And, like, even me being, you know, studying the um, nations of God and all that, you know, that's just me trying to contribute, you know. Because this is, you know, because that's where the culture is at. Just Ice. His name was, he breaked it down from just Justice. You know, Big Daddy King. King Asiatic, nobody equal. You know, Joaquin saying, know the ledge. Knowledge. You know, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Like, I need, I just needed to know these stuff, you know. I, and I was just curious, cause, you know, like, I mean, it was throwing, throwing in, in every part. Like, okay, like, Ghostface Killer was saying, King God Devon back in the days. King God Devon? What does that mean? It was just kid, you know. He, he was, he, um, and that's Doom was saying, she shot for punk. He meant by cop, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he, like, lyrically, when, lyrically, yes, lyrically, I advanced a lot since coming to New York and, you know, just studying. I was reading quite a lot. I read, you know, I can't remember every line, but, like, I read the Quran, Bible, Bhagavad Gita. I got quite, I read a lot, you know, mm-hmm. I studied a lot. I went through, yes. Now, now you know, now I'm very, um, well connected. You, you know the guy that's um, in this um, uh, documentary called The Show? There's one Japanese guy that's making an interview. His name is Yushi. Okay. Yes, I have some big plans with him, too. Um, yes. Okay, that's great. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, oh, wait, let, me ask, let me ask you this question. Yes, sir, yes, sir. So you told me what hip-hop gave you as you came over here. Yes, sir. How did that change... Well, how did you change the culture when you big, went back to Japan and bought all your knowledge that you learned here there? I'm definitely putting it in my uh, lyrics and stuff. And okay. uh, I talk with people. I mean, you know, um, when I brought it back to Japan. And yeah, this, is another, this, is, this is not a crazy part, though. It's me like, Japan. Japan is, like, you see... Li- you see these kids growing up with just Japanese hip hop. You see kids that's growing up with trap music. So there's so many diversities out there in Japan, even you know. 
Mm-hmm. So many kinds, so many styles even. It's amazing really how they how they incorporated the whole culture in. Now it's their it's it's strangely their own culture too in a way. So, you know, that's another thing. Oh, the reason, you know you know, I thought it was just really you know, it's I thought it was not right just to you know, till a few years ago, you know, when I, I was busy trying to become a New York hip hop artist, right? right? But till a few, you know, I noticed that 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 was a disgrace. That's that's not what I should do for the culture, you know. Mm-hmm. I need to understand it and like advance it, you know, like make it in my understand it from the bone of mine and like spread the knowledge of new, you know. And that's what my music is, you know. That's what I spread it in Japan, even. My, uh, my latest EP, the newest EP that I set it off in Japan, uh, I'll, sh- I'll show you the jacket later on. It has the seven in the middle, like the five percent flag. You know, I'm, I'm putting in so many words that people might not understand, but every time I, and, uh, I made sure to have that lyric booklet inside the CD even. You know, it's crazy. Japan still sells CD even, really. Japan still yeah. sells That's dope. Well, yeah. okay, hold up. Hold up. Wait, 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 wait. Let's not go too far because I want to stick okay. to what you said. Mm-hmm. So, Japan has all this style. Yeah. And you're talking about your music. Mm-hmm. When you talk to me, you talk to me. You talk to me in the term of a lot of five percent knowledge and a lot of boom bap artistry. Yes, is I that guess. is that the sound that you have taken to and that you want to keep alive? Is the boom bap and knowledge knowledge lyric sound? Yes, conscious. Yes, definitely conscious. You want to keep the conscious but, sound. So in the world today, conscious music is, is coming back now, especially mm-hmm. through the rising of brutality racism, mm-hmm. sexism, mm-hmm. and all those things. Mm-hmm. Why is it important is, you know, for you? To, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay. The thing is, you know, it's not like I'm refusing trap music, you know. I can't, I do listen to trap music, too. No problem. But, and uh, even with these uh, tracks I made in Japan, I did some tra- trap tracks, too. Mm-hmm. But the lyric has to be conscious. That's me. I can't be somebody else. You know, this is the thing, you know, like, switching up styles, switching up lanes, I don't think so, you know. As long as you are you, you can be who you, you know, that's what it is, you know. And, like, so I I think, you know, and I'm a lyricist, you know, and Mm -hmm. even with these beats, you know, I just... Pick up the beats that I feel, you know, mm-hmm. and like just and but the the stuff that I spit is always conscious. It has to be, you know. It has to be the knowledge, you know, knowledge born. So, yes, sir. So, so then that goes to my question: mm-hmm. What is the what is what is the significance of knowledge and conscious music today? When Nina Simone said the the, uh, the duty of an artist is to reflect the times they're living in, what do you want to show the listener when they listen to you? Tell me that Nina Simone word again. That's great. I didn't know Nina, that. Word. Nina Simone said that the responsibility yeah. of an artist is to make music or make art that reflects the time in which they're living in. Yes, you know. So basically, what what I'm what I be rapping is like you know, is my life, is my style, is what I what I what I am inside the hip hop community, and what I do for the people, you know, and mm-hmm. it's and I'm 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 totally about lyricism, you know. I'm I use certain complicated words, but that's to acknowledge the new format. I need it. You know, when people, you know, you can't just go into somebody's lane and try to become somebody, you know. You have to make your own lane and become you, you know. 
And all these words I'm combining is from what I've done. What I, you know, it's not like I, I lived a clean life and I lived lived good. You know, you know. I hate to say this, but like back in the days, you know, when when I was a teenager, even you know, just to make money coming out here, you know, I smuggled some stuff. Even really, I smuggled yeah. it back to Japan and all that. Just to make some money and all that. There's some crazy stories about that too, but I'll, I'll tell you about that later on. Yes, but like, you know, it, it's about life and pot, but at the end of the day, you know, one song I made it for my daughter Nina, it's about, you know, it's about my life. It's about the people, you know, it's about like, even with that song that I made for my daughter, See, yes, Nina. I actually took that name from Nina Simone, too. Um, nice. If you break that, it, if I break the, the word uh, Nina in Japan, it sounds ni and nana, which means two and seven. That's why I'm, I'm shouting out wisdom God inside the lyrics and all that. You know, wow. like, yeah, it's like, and that that's what she is to me, you know. And mm. yeah, it's like it's it's a, it's about my yes, and um, I mean, you know, I guess I pick up all these quotes from all kinds of places. I just want to make it interesting and just you know, just while I was living here and like you know, like not you know most of the years while I was trying to struggle, make you know, all this ends ends meet and all that. You know, music was just a joy to me, you know. It was just the only, it was the only outlet that I actually had while I was living here in New York to just get my feelings out, you know, and just to live, you know. Mm. And all I could have done is just listen to the music, enjoy myself, and just write it, you know. And that's where it comes from, basically. So let's focus on that. You have a you have an extensive catalog. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You you released a lot of music and I unfortunately I couldn't get to all of it due to some things going on. But um this is Karev on Heritage Hip Hop Podcast and you're on the line right now with Omen forty four. Like I said, extensive catalog um of of I'm gonna call you a wizard because you're concocting sounds and bringing them out of out of out of, out of the air that people don't normally hear. And you have a new album coming out called Hentai, correct? Yes, sir. So, Hentai. Let's talk yes, about sir. Hentai, because Hentai is an art form. Yes, sir. Hentai means pervert, but it means, it basically means I'm a hip-hop fiend, you know. And, like, like every that. time, yes, every time I t think about this word, Hentai, pervert, you know, it reminds me of the line from J. Root the Damager saying, Yo, the perverted monks in the house. Yeah. You know, back, back in the days, that was like, you know, back in the days, like, Wu-Tang saying Shaolin, Shaolin, Staten Island, blah, 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 you know, like, put a monks in, like, not saying put a monks in the trunk or, you know, those things were like, like, even with Jay Wu, you know, perverted monk and, like, why in the hell are these people talking about monks and Shaolin and, like, you know, Asiatic stuff, you know, like, it, it was crazy, and it, it felt really strange, but, like, you know, yeah, because, like, you, I still remember, like, when I first saw Raekwon's name on, uh, um, I forgot what kind of mag magazine it was, or, like, Raekwon, what is this man, uh, half Chinese, or, whoa, you know, <laughs> and I, you know, back in the days, I didn't know about the, you know, the Asiatic thing, so, like, yeah, it was crazy, so. Yeah, I mean, like I said, our, our yes. culture in America, we have an extensive connection with Asian culture, because when you talk about Asiatics and the original man, and you talk about Buddha and Siddhartha Gautama, you talk about, um, who's my man, Guan Yu and Wa Fei, like, we talk about people who are in history just as deep rooted into us as they are into what's there today. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, and, totally, that's totally true. Um, you know, one thing I 
like, I, I'm not sure if this is true, but, like, you know, I was reading this book uh, a while ago. It's been a while since I read that book, but it was talking about how um, Rastafarians, right, yeah. incorporated the Hindu ideas back in the days. Because one, Rast- one of the founders of the Rasta movement, there was a guy in the name of uh, Guru Marag or something. So he was uh-huh. called Guru. So I'm sure there was a Hindu influences in it. That's why, you know, Hindus do smoke. In the Hindu scripture, it says Shiva was smoking, mar- you know, marijuana and all that. Mm-hmm. So, and the way they were saying Jalasta Falai, it's very similar to Jai Malikai when they talk about the gods, you know. So when you think about it, there's so many, there's influences in all kinds of levels that people don't even realize. And it, it might be just subconscious even, really. Yeah. And that also goes back to the music because the influence of music penetrates the soul. It penetrates whatever ism that you may think separates people, and it actually brings us together, which brings me to one of your songs. Tell me about Dum Dum and where you were going with that. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, I forgot it that. We were on the uh, my album thing, right? Yes. So uh, this album, I included three singles which uh, the two singles came out. Uh, one was called um, I Can See the Sun, which I uh, featured Sky Zoo on it, Peace to Sky Zoo. Uh, shout out to And um, one was called uh, Dum Dum. Yes, uh, I featured actually a French rapper in the name of Fizzy Peasy, and I had a French producer producing it for me too. Um, the reason I made this track was I wanted I wanted to do it with the French artist so bad and reason for that was because of Guru shout out to Gangsta you know mm-hmm. he he had that album called um, Jazz Matat back in the days I'm, it was Jazz Matat 2 I'm sure it was the second song um he had this French rapper on it. And like, when I heard it first, it was just so, so sophisticated. It was, it was, it was deep. And even in the 90s, there was this producer in the name of Nobukaz Takimura, who was featuring two artists, I mean, um, a French rapper on his album even. Most people don't know this even. But, like, when when you start digging all these cultures, you find some really strange stuff, you know. And definitely that Jasmine Taz, too. I think, you know, this album, Hentai, mm-hmm. I first named it, I, I was supposed to name it Jasmine Taz, too, at the beginning, mm-hmm. but I quit it then. And, but, the thing was, it was, when I'm going through making all these tracks and, like, combining it, I just noticed it was what I really loved, you know, what I really wanted to do, like, who I wanted to, what what I was trying to make, you know, from the core of it. And, like, but not just making the same thing, but, like, advancing that into the next generation. And that was the whole concept of this hentai. Word. Because even, yes, you know, the, the song you got with Sky Zoo, I like. I like a lot. You know, Can I See the yes, Sun? Yes. And I mean, like, Sky Zoo? Sky Zoo's one of my favorite artists in today's hip-hop culture. Yes, yes, um, yes, I've been yes. following him for a while. And to see y'all two come together, that was very that was very good for me because it showed me that you're connected to the culture and you're not somebody who just keeps their mind in the culture on the past that you grow with it and you embrace the culture. What do you think is the biggest advantage of growing with hip-hop instead of just doing hip-hop? Well, 
I just grew with it, you know. I can't really say that. You know, um, folks raised my bar it was quite high, you know. So I needed to, you know, I needed to go over it little by little and uh, make make some advances step by step. And Sky Zoo is like one of the most underrated artists out here, you know. His track he's doing with Westside Gun, like his track he did with the uh, Pete Rock, you know, those are like hard. Yeah, great, they great songs. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 real. Like it's hard, and like it is boom bap, but like boom bap in the finest way, and like in a way that it's very. How should I put it? Um, Soulful. Yes, but like it's it, it's still advancing, you know, like mm -hmm. like. People, when people talk about boom bap, you know, they just think about the '90s hip hop, but it's not. It's the move. It's it's the hip hop that's still moving right now. It's the hip hop that's still changing their changing its style. It's 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 still advancing. You know, that's another that's another thing that for this album, yes, it's it's. It's totally the nineties hip hop that I grew up with and I, I put it in so much feeling from back in the days, but even with the way I'm rhyming on it, like even with the song I can see the sun, I you know, I've been putting words together quite tight and like rap rapping it double time even on it. That that's like methods people use when they're uh, rapping on trap music and all that, you know. I just wanted to combine it, all these styles, all these new things, you know. To me, music, you know, like hip hop itself has to be growing, changing. Like Nina Simone said, you know, it has to be reflecting the era all the time. So it has to be changing all the time. Yeah, it has to be growing all the time. So like, like yes, me growing up with hip hop. I have to grow with it, and I have to, you know, I ha I have to grow with it. So this, you know, like, this is grown-ass man hip-hop, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, so, like, you know, uh, that's, that's simply what it is, yeah. Um, so, like, you know, coming in from any angle, yes, it's, I think that's, that's unique, you know. People need to figure out their own style and do something. But, you know, yeah, just with these kids, you know, nowadays, you know, maybe they they might think it will be easier just copying somebody and do doing something, you know, and, like, getting, getting the attention real quick. But, you know, like what the genius, like the poor people, pioneers told us, you know, you know, you know, regular people copy, genius steals, you know. You have to steal the whole thing, and you got to make your own thing. You got to make it into your own thing. You have to grow with it. With that's that being awesome. said, everybody, you, we want you to grow and experience the music of Omen 44, who not only shows you his appreciation of hip-hop culture, but he probably knows a lot more hip-hop than some of the people who claim they are hip-hop. Give everybody your social media and how they can get your music. Yes, sir. Um, I have a... Twitter account and a Instagram account. It goes by O M E N Omen four four as an alphabet F O U R F O U R. So it's O M E N F O U R F O U R. Instagram and Twitter. I have my label, the Plug International, for the Facebook page. Um, I have we have the the Plug Inter I have my own. Uh, I have the spot and. For the, my music, I have it's on every format: Spotify, Apple Music. I even have it in LP, seven-inch vinyls. I'm selling CDs in Japan, um, and quite a lot of merch too. Uh, so yes, check me out, definitely. Peace. All right, so, 
So everybody out there, check his music out. I looked for it on Tidal, it wasn't there. So I had to go to Spotify to get a taste of it. And when I did, I was Listen pleasantly surprised. Nah, but guess oh, what? Man. I found it, and I'm pleasantly surprised. And I, and I want to say I purchased two songs at least, because I didn't hear the whole project yet. But for everybody out there, Heritage Hip Hop does not believe in streaming. We believe in purchasing. So check out Omen 44, The Plug International. And if you like what you hear, we ask that you purchase the music because... If the internet went down today and you did not buy your music, you do not own that music that you love so much. So do yourself a favor. Get behind the artists and give them the music and give them the money that makes their music possible and makes it possible for you to get more music. You agree? Yes, sir. And buy, right. buy the vinyls too. Vinyls are the, you know, when it comes to uh, true sound, vinyls are the best still. I believe that. Yes, sir. So before we leave, I would like to play a game which you call the Rapid Fire Questions. Would you like to play this game, sir? All right, yes, sir. Let's get the it. rapid the Rapid Fire Questions are not yes no questions. These are questions designed to show your depth of the hip hop genre and your appreciation of the genre as well. As well. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. First question: What song or album from another artist catalog perfectly describes you? Artist and the album. I, I told you that already. Jasmine Taz 2. Uh, there you go. All right. Guru. Guru. Yes. R.R.P. Jasmine Taz 2. And I was in the French MC. You talking about MC Solar. Am I correct? Yes. I guess. There you I go. Guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. There yes, you go. Sir. Yes, sir. Question number two. As an artist, sounds and inflections are what makes the song become alive. What is the most important sound in hip hop and how do you capture it? The bass line. The bass line. Tell me about the bass line. Bass drum line and drums. Hmm. So without it, you can't make a song? You know, this is another strange part. Like, you know, these. These young kids that's doing trap cat traps and stuff, mm. they're actually quite advanced with the key and everything. There's quite a lot of kids that can sing nowadays. Mm hmm If you notice, if you listen to it carefully. And they they take very quick careful attention with the keys and all that. That's something that nineties hip hop didn't do. Because it was just one loop and it's well it's still one loop but like you know so yes i i think about the keys i think about all all kinds of elements but when it comes down it's making sure you put your rhyming with the, the drum beat not that mm. i can sacrifice my word for a drum though that's another okay. thing yes Okay, so, so here's my next question. That's dope. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. Here's my next question. Hip-hop always had remixes where they re-put put out a song with a different beat or added artist to it. I want to ask you, what's the greatest hip-hop remix of all time? Greatest remix of all time. There's quite a lot, actually. Yeah, actually. but just give me one. What's your favorite remix of all time? What's the greatest in your opinion? Oh, that's a that's a hard question. <laughs> that's a hard question because I, I I only can choose one, right? Yeah, it, 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 what, what do you got? Oh, um, Remix. The biggest Remix. Mm-hmm. I got. I have to give it to DJ Crush though. Um, there was this song called. Um, uh, hold on, let me come up with the name. Um, it was a song with the uh, D'Angelo and Method Man. Uh, the song was called. Uh, uh, hold on, break up, break up to make up. Breakups to Makeup. 
Okay. And DJ Crush made a remix version for this. And that track, most people don't know that track, but to me, that was, that is one of the best remixes that I think it is. Um, that, that, that I think is. Uh, though, damn, yes. This was bad. This was a hard question. Hey man, it get better. <laughs> they get better. I want to hear that remix. Oh like wait, DJ hold Carter, on. Shout out to you. <laughs> oh, you got another one? No, the thing was, I should just said uh, my own remix with the, the the remix that I did with uh, uh, Wiser from uh, Bad Hop and uh, uh, Maria from uh, Japan uh, that I did for this song called "Came Far for the Killing." I should okay. just said that one. Hey, hey, you, you said them both. There's no bad right, answer. Yeah. There's no wrong answer. That's all good. Yes. yes, sir. My next question to you is this. Is, um, yes. Are you familiar with um, New Jabies? New Jabies? Yeah. Oh, New Jabes. Yeah, okay. That's his name? Uh, the, uh, That's the English uh, pronunciation that I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yes. Um, he's, he's a jazz producer, right? Yes, he was. He Shingle 2 is actually the guy that was rapping on his track. Right. Back in the days. Yes, yes. And, uh, yes, uh, you know, R.I.P., you know, rest in peace. Yeah. You know, he, he, he was a great producer, you know. He was yes, like, he was. He was like he Japanese. Yes, he was like Japanese. He was like the Japanese J. Dillo. Yes, he, yes, he was. He, he was a great, he was a great artist. Shout out to him. And the reason why I asked about him, is because he bit the culture in a way where it was it was it was like a landmark when it comes to international hip hop. What is your international hip hop landmark that made the bridging of Japan and New York hip hop culture exist? You know, I actually made a mixtape for that. Uh, I actually am rhyming over. Um, New job is his, uh, beat. Um, the mix, the mixtape is called Japan According to Omen 44. And nice. Yes, I just took all the Japanese samples I can think of and like just combined it. Like, he, yes, there, there's quite a lot of Japanese influence, you know, if people, you know, people don't realize, like, even with, um, that line from, um, uh, who was that guy? Um, uh, Ricky, Ricky, uh, the, like even, even that song, it's all because of you. I'm feeling yeah. sad right. and blue. Yes. Like even that line is from this song Sukiyaki. And that was, that was performed by a Japanese artist back in the days, you know. And, mm. Like, even alchemists were sampling Japanese beats. Pete Rock had some, was sampling. There, there's so many things that's out there that, that is sampled in Japan. That's sampled from Japanese song, too, though. That's true. That's dope. And I like how you said that. Yeah. So, like, you know, yes, I mean, DJ Crush, all these people are, like, they were the actual landmark, like, DJ, you know, if it wasn't D for DJ Honda coming to New York and doing all that, you know, I don't think I would have earned this kind of trust from you even or from somebody, you know. Mm. They, you know, like, you know, pe people were, you know, people did respect me as a Japanese, as a, a Asia because of, you know, these, the pioneers that came before us and, like, Proved their show, show and proved, you know. Shout out so, to DJ Honda. That's a name I didn't hear in a long time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, wait. So let's 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 continue and go on this journey. I got mm -hmm. three more questions, and then we're gonna close out. Okay. My question, my one of my questions is, if you can make your dream track, who would who would feature on the track with you, and who would do the beat? And here's the caveat, dead or alive, no restrictions. What's your dream track? Wow. Well, 
you know, the thing is, you know, I was able to do so many songs with all these great artists, like even with Sizzla or Molly Morrow. Like mm -hmm. these people were, you know, these are the gods, you know, like, so every time I, so like these songs, it's every time I feature them, it's, it's, it's the song that I wanted to do. So like, they are alive. Yes, I, you know, I want, I want to do it with so many artists, but the thing is, you know, at the end of the day, I have to be me, really. Sure. Not like, yes. So, I don't know. Oh, oh, okay. There, there's one person. Definitely one person. Uh, if, if it, if it was possible, or if it is possible, um, just one person, right? But no, um, whatever you want is your dream track. Whatever you want to build. Okay. Um, Last Poets with yeah. James Brown. Uh, that that would be incredible. I would last Poets will be yes. Last Poets will be hard. Yes, Last Poets. That, that, that is that is incredible. Wow. Okay. Okay, so my next question. Wow. Okay, my next question. <laughs> my, my my next question from that. Wow, that, that is deep because James Brown is the author of bars and in the poetry. They can, woo. Okay. Woo. I mean, Public Enemy number one. You know, like he, you know, yeah, like, I mean, like King Hev King Heron, You know, like <laughs> that's that's woo. rap. That's, yeah. that's rap. You know, and then you got the JVs as the yes, behind you. Yes. Woo. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's funk soul. Okay, I got you. All right, so so my next question is this. If a child came up to you and said, what is hip-hop, what are the five albums you would give them to listen to to define hip-hop for them? Okay. I will... Um, Run DMC with the right, uh, we was rising, what was the title of the album? Rising. Raising Hell? Uh, yes, Raising Hell, you're right. Um, uh, Raising Hell. Uh, Nazomatic. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My album Hen Hentai. Hentai, and, okay. Now hold on. And Put it in there. I have two. Hentai. I still two. I still have two more, right? You got two more, but hit, that, hey, Hentai was good. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and two more. Whoa, just two more. Whoa. <laughs> There's two more. It's really tricky, you know. Hey, welcome, welcome to Heritage Hip Hop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you gotta give me a minute. Damn, you made me think so. Whoa, this is a hard one. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, <laughs> damn, um. While he's thinking, everybody, thank you for listening to this podcast. <laughs> this is Fred with Omen 44. As we go through the, 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 the five albums that he's defining as hip-hop, we have Illmatic. <laughs> we have Raising Hell. Oh, Nas Illmatic, Earned NC Raising Hell. We have Omen 44 Hentai, and the next album is... Um, <laughs> and... Damn. Wow. This is a hard one, though. Um, <laughs> well, you can tap out if you want to. You guys gave us three. Yes, forgive me. Uh, the, th the three is the best I can do right okay. now. Okay. He gave us three. Uh, 
So Omen uh, owes us you know, two more. <laughs> what, what I was trying to figure out was between 2000 to, you know, 2015. But, you know, really? there's quite a lot of options right there. And, uh, yeah, okay. that, that is, that was, that, that was too much for me. I'm sorry. Okay. No problem. Here's the last question, and it's the most important question of the first interview. I say first because you have you have the option to always come back to Heritage Hip Hop, but you don't need an album out to be hot for us to talk to you. You have a story, and we respect you as a man, and we respect your story. Heritage Hip Hop invest in people and not playlists. So with that being said, you're always welcome to come back and share your story with us at any time, all right? Yes, sir. Peace. Thank you. So 500 years from now, there's going to be a hip-hop museum, and someone's going to go into the Chamber of International Hip-Hop um, Artistry, and they're going to see Omen 44 as a, as a, as a hologram Star Wars 3D plaque or something, right? They're going to tell your story. And in there, somebody's going to push a button, and they're going to hear your music. And your music is going to be introduced to children um, the, uh, the genre, the culture, the world, 500 years from now in the future. My question to you in appreciating your life and not wishing any harm on you or any of your loved ones is this. 500 years from now when people hear your music, what is the legacy that you left behind that made the world better because you made music? You know, my, my 5% of the name is actually Culture Freedom, Allah. And it comes mm -hmm. from, you know, 40, home and 4, 4, the 4, 4 and 4. Mm -hmm. So, the legacy that I want to leave behind is freeing people's soul, you know, to free them from all uh, captivity. Like, we're stuck mm -hmm. in so many stuff. We're stuck in materialism out here. We're st some people are stuck in depression, killing themselves. You know, some people are stuck in poverty. I just want to free. I I want people to listen to my music and be motivated and become free. And that's the culture that I'm pushing. And with that being said, everybody, the world can be a harsh place, but good music can take you to a better place. Even in the Bible, it said when Saul wanted to kill David, David played music on the harp and played the savage beast out of his soul. So say you can save lives and you can save your sanity by not only listening to good music, but letting the music move you and inspire you to do better things. This is Karev of Heritage Hip Hop with Omen 44, and we say peace, and we out. Omen 44 brings a perspective to hip hop that I think people take for granted. See, in America, we were born and grew up in hip hop, but he comes from a time when he seen hip hop come to fruition and it wasn't something that was just there. He's seen it formulate and appreciates it from a creative standpoint. And given that he studied under the nations of gods and earth, salute to the five percenters out there, he's really about knowledge itself, consciousness, and relating that to his fellow man. So we salute Omen 44 and we ask everybody to please go check out his music. Not only is it timeless, it's meaningful. So support the man, look for the hentai album coming soon. This episode of the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast is brought to you by HeritageHipHop.com. And on Heritage Hip Hop, we celebrate hip hop culture through the lives of the foundation of hip hop, which is you. And you are God's blessing. We teach profitability to the independent artists and show how to create a team and build your brand. Not only that, we invest in people over playlists. Yes, we give free music. But we invest in the story of the MC to make people love who you are and want to check out your music as well. So please support HeritageHipHop.com by going to HeritageHipHop.com and subscribing. You, su you can subscribe to Heritage Hip Hop on YouTube, like, share, and comment on the videos. Let us know that you're out there. Giveaways coming soon to the people who comment. So follow us on Instagram, Twitter. All social medias, uh, you can hear the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Deezer, Anchor.fm as we put our back catalog up. Catch up. We have, we have great shows 
that we've done and great shows coming thanks to you, the people who make Heritage Hip Hop possible. To give a shout out to everybody that helps us, shout out to Transparent Credit Repair. If you go to www.heritagehiphop.com and click on the link for Transparent Credit Repair, that one decision that you that you make can change your life. By changing your credit score, you can open your wallet up to receive more money instead of paying out more debt. So go to heritagehiphop.com and click on Transparent Credit Repair, 20% off of all services given change your life with one financial decision i'd like to give a shout out to bq fatty's place he's coming home y'all and we're so very thankful so shout out to uh the most high and bq because um he survived and that's what's up shout out to fire jaw shout out to shout out fire, fire jaws from wildfire marketing new music coming and if you need any help with promotion or placement fire jaws on uh, instagram shout out to lex diamonds diamonds entertainment llc sports podcast out right now shout out to the good fellas tommy guns dab the photographer aep underscore presents on facebook shaw montana Adi, dj Adi R, also known as dj big a which is a h d a y a r on youtube the big a show the Goodfellas Recap is a weekly show done by the Goodfellas, including myself as a Goodfella. And we talk about sports, politics, music, etc. So make sure you check them out as well. Goodfellas TV, G O O D F E L L A Z T V dot com and on Instagram. Everybody out there, we thank you for listening to the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. We couldn't do this without the most high and without your ear. Playlist 5 is coming very soon. More interviews are coming. And remember, y'all. Stay safe out here. Corona is serious and it's taking people out and we don't want to lose any more people. Make sure you go vote and then change the world. And with that, we say peace and we out.